Hello everyone, in this 12th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to add in the ability to stop our timer at zero as well as restart the level for game over. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So up until now, our timer counts down every single second, but when it hits zero, it still keeps on counting. Now we can use the script we've already written to our advantage to allow ourselves to respawn in the level. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a cool little scene that we can use to manipulate levels. And what I mean by that is we can use the same scene to take ourselves to different levels whenever we've created them. So we could use this as, think of it as a respawn scene. So that's probably what we're going to call it. So let's go to File and click New Scene. And then let's click File again. And let's go to Save As. And let's go to our scenes. And we'll call this Respawn. Now all this scene is going to be is just an empty scene with perhaps a black background. And it's going to have a little script in it which will allow us to go back to the level that we're supposed to be in. So we're going to be using something called scene management with this tutorial as well. So we'll do quite a lot here. I just hope it doesn't drag on for too long. So let's go to game object and let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. Now I know we've not dealt too much with how UI works, but essentially all we need to do here is just create a completely black background. So let's have this stretched. Let's have it zero, 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 zero. So it stretches all the way across and let's change the color to black. And if it goes to the game view, that is how the scene will look whenever we start it. And like I say, we can use that to our advantage. Next, what we need to do is create a um, script which will allow us to basically load up our other level. And to do all of this, we are going to have to manipulate how our scenes work. So while we're here, let's save our scene. Let's go to File and let's go to Build Settings. Now let's click Add Open Scenes and you'll see that this appears at the top with a value of zero. While we're here, let's add our other scene, which is currently called Sample Scene. You can change the name of it if you want to. And that will give it a value of one. We can swap these around if we want to just by dragging and dropping. So now Respawn Scene is currently value one, scene one and sample scene, our original scene, is value zero, which is scene zero. This one will always be the first scene to load. So how do we make it so as this scene instantly takes us to our game? Let's go to scripts, let's right click, create, let's go to C sharp script, and we'll call this respawning. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. And Basically, this script is going to have the ability to, as soon as it loads, just instantly take us to another scene. So we're going to need to use a namespace here. We need to have using Unity Engine dot scene management with a semicolon. We don't need the update method and we do not need the annotations. They can disappear. And the only line of code we'll need here is scene manager dot load scene and in brackets zero because currently our main scene is scene zero this will change later on in development we're going to make it a little more uh, dynamic and ultimately for now we just need it to take us to the scene so we don't need to worry about that zero being anything else right now so let's have a semicolon there and save now let's head back into Unity. And there's nothing special we have to do really. All we need to do is just make sure this script is in this scene so we can attach it to pretty much anything here. I'm just going to attach it to the camera. And there we go, you can see the script is down there. So let's save our scene. And what will happen when we press play is it will basically load up our other scene. Perfect. So just to show you how that actually really works is if we disable that script and press play, we will indeed stay in the scene. And as soon as the script becomes active, 
we end up in another scene. So, like I said, I've said it a few times this uh, lesson, we can use that to our advantage. Just by loading this scene, we instantly reload our other scene. So, let's head back to our main scene. We shall we save that one. So, when we want uh, to respawn when our timer hits zero, we can use the same mechanic there and load that other scene, which will instantly reload this scene, and everything will be reset, so we've respawned the entire level. So, let's head to our scripts. Let's go to our timer, which is global time. And let's add at the top the namespace using unity engine dot scene management semicolon. Now, what we have to do here is we have to establish the moment when our timer hits zero. Do we make it so as as soon as it hits zero, we respawn, or as soon as it's supposed to hit negative one, it respawns? I'm thinking we should make it as soon as it hits negative one. The reason for this is because it will basically look like it is only giving us until one second before we respawn. So keep in mind that we want anything to trigger as soon as it gets below zero. So we can do this in void update. Let's do it at the top. And we can say if, and here we need to put the seconds equals negative one, then do the following. And what we're going to do is we're going to permanently make the value of seconds, at least in this script for all intents and purposes, keep it as zero. So we're going to say seconds equals zero. And we're going to have scene manager dot load scene one semicolon. And ultimately what's happening here is we are going to that other scene and coming back again. Now, we do in fact need an extra layer of protection here simply because we could effectively still change it with this. So we're going to have an else statement here. And we're going to open the curly bracket there and close the curly bracket after our original if statement. So the reason we've had to do this is because if seconds isn't minus one, then we go down here and run this section. If it is, we only run this section. Therefore, we cannot mess with the time any further and we reset. So this will be advantageous to us whenever we add a little bit of extra UI to our game. For example, we perhaps say ran out of time and it fades out and then respawns. So as long as we get the main respawning mechanic working here, we don't have a problem at all. So this is going to be our game over and respawn. So let's save that script. Let's head back into Unity. Let it compile. And let's press play. So I'm not really going to do much here because there's no point. We just need the time to run out. these blocks around a little bit okay so our time is coming to an end now and we should be getting game over and respawning in a couple of seconds now it did uh, flag to negative one there I think so there's a couple of things that we need to sort out now um, let me see. Let's go back into global time. And I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's actually change this to zero and see if that does indeed make a difference. I may have overcompensated when I set it to um, negative one because of our wait time here. So if you get that problem, you may need to change it to zero. I think it all depends on where we have our waiting period down here in deduct second. So while we're at it, let's change that. And I think we do need to go back to our respawn scene simply because I think I turned this off, didn't I? That's why we didn't respawn. So make sure that is indeed ticked. So let's go to our main scene. 
and try once again. So hopefully you guys can see how all of this is piecing together now. And what I would like to do next tutorial is I want to... It's a bit loud this music isn't it? I want to make some animation to this so we kind of fade out to all of this and then perhaps maybe fade in? Um, not quite sure but I want a game over on the screen as well, some text to say that we've run out of time. So let's see if this works now. Okay, that should probably do the trick. We did indeed see zero, it didn't reset on one second, so everything works as intended. So yeah, next tutorial we're going to add some more UI to kind of expand on that and say you ran out of time and uh, maybe a fade out as well. So until the next lesson, thank you very much for watching guys.